You're listening to the Oz TV podcast only on the Oz Network. Hey, this is Billy Garcia from Survivor Cook Islands. Thank you for joining us on the Oz Network for the Survivor Ghost Island Recap. And I'm joined by the one and only Figgy from Survivor Millennials vs. Gen X. Hello, Figgy. Hey, how are you, Billy, my love? Uh, I'm even (laughs) better now. I was great already, but now I'm even better. (laughs) Beautiful. All right, so we've got the first episode a double episode in for survivor ghost island and let me get your feelings on it before i say how i feel about it <sighs> well i am digging the theme i really enjoy ghost island as a whole because we get to kind of back in time and listen to these past mistakes for people that haven't played the game or um, or people that haven't watched the show they can still kind of understand things because obviously with these things it kind of explains why they're happening and why they're receiving it but I love I think I really enjoy the cast so far Um, we have some bold personalities out the gate which is gonna be exciting to see how that plays out in the next episode and the one after that and the one after that the longer these people stay in and uh, I'm just really excited. And the twist of Ghost Island is going to completely flip, I feel like, what the people at Merge should typically be. The stronger people. The, the people that you would need to get to the Merge so your tribe could win. But now when we're sending the weaker players to Ghost Island and keeping them in the game longer, I feel like that's gonna, we're going to see a little bit of a change of pace this season. Yeah, I I agree with with that uh, for sure. What what gets me is right off the gate, uh, we start off with this twist where the the basically uh, they pick two a person from each tribe, and each person each one of these people have to pick a person from their tribe to compete in a in a challenge. Yeah. So I was already was like, why didn't we just do that from the start? But, yeah, <laughs> and uh, and then. The, the, they're, they're competing for a reward, and the reward is like, if you win, you get all of this, and the loser gets all of that. But if you you chicken out and, and you cop out of the challenge, then you'll get everything. But if you lose, you'll get only half of what we just promised you. And I was sitting there going, man, I should have taken this. It's a lot. I missed. I didn't miss this season where people would like when we ambush the the woods to you know grab as much as we can and you know getting you know the people throwing things off the boat I think it's very fun to see um but it was very interesting seeing you know how people react to picking a person and then they had to pick two people and then like you said if you it was if you um keep going and the timer runs out then whoever wins gets everything but if you pull out uh, no pun intended. Yeah. Then you, then you get just the fishing gear. So you still got something. And I felt like, you know, I was just like, man, like I wish they would have had that for me because we would have at least had fishing gear. We were begging for fishing gear. We never, I never got fishing gear until my tribe swapped. So it was very hard to see that. Yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you. But I felt like that was a game of chicken, basically, is what it was. Too much. Yeah. One hundred percent. Yeah, it was just such a, such a twisty explanation that I was like sitting there going okay this is going to be a season where I'm going to need like paper and a pen and I, <laughs> I'm going to need to start taking notes. And... Yeah typically I do and that's why I'm glad that you are talking with me because then you can brush me up if I miss something but yeah <laughs> this season's going to have a lot to talk about and I'm I'm pumped up about it. Yeah yeah I'll, uh, you know I, this is one of my big fears is that uh, this season gets so so full of of stuff to talk about that all of my podcasts like inflict the three hours long, four hours long. <laughs> yeah, just to they're cover all, it all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but hey, it'll be stuff worth talking about. So that's the good good end. So the first challenge happens, 
and Malolo loses. I, I just love the name of that track, Malolo. I just, I don't know. It's great. <laughs> so, uh, in, a, in a twist that's reminiscent of my season, the losing tribe sends, a, or, or I'm sorry, the winning tribe sends a member of the losing tribe to instead of Exile Island like on my season, to Ghost Island. And Jacob, the star of our episode, gets uh, gets sent to, to Ghost Island. And uh, I'll let you take it from here. What do you yeah, so if he really was playing the part like he says to get sent to Ghost Island, that is smart because he's immune and obviously his tribe saw him as weak. So I do believe that was the case, that he truly was trying to sell it, like, send me, like, we're the best tribe ever, blah, blah, and they're like, oh, well, he's talking crap, so we're going to send him there. He's like, yes, I would want to go to Ghost Island, too. You're immune, and obviously it's the first, you, you know, this island in Survivor history, so, so you, you get, get to be a part, part of being the first, first person there, there. you're making history, history right? 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 And, and it's, it's just, it's a very, very unique opportunity, so, so if he's, he's being, being true to, to like, like, I was trying, trying to get you guys to send me, good, good for him, because it worked, and he gets to go. So I I'm, I was excited um, about that twist, but like I told you earlier, it's like, all right, so now you're sending weak people there, and you're going to make the tribe weaker by keeping them. So it's a very interesting concept. Yeah, my my uh, my take on it, though, is it's fine that he, that he came up with this great idea of getting himself sent. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> why? Yeah, I, why did you have to say that afterwards? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. So he goes to Ghost Island, and he's confronted with a lot of cool aesthetics. I'll admit that Ghost Island looks really, really cool. It's pretty legit, yeah. That's awesome. And then he, he cracks open this urn and tells him that he, got, he has to, to play a game, and then this game happens, or, or he has to choose whether or not to play a game. Yeah. That if he, if he loses the game, he loses his vote at the next tribal council. But if he wins, he wins some sort of advantage. Such a risk. It, it's it, it's not even a it's a game, but it's not. It's pick, pick left, left or, or right. right. <laughs> it's, it's a rock draw. draw. It's, it's a survivor, survivor rock, rock draw. draw. If you, if get, you get, get the rock, rock you're, you're out. out. And you, you lose your vote. vote. If you get the white rock, then you get the advantage. So Yeah, yeah. And then what what got me okay, he he, he, he took the risk because he's a he came to play. I, I'll give him that. It was an advantage that isn't even for him. I know. <laughs> it's like it's like if, if it were me, like that would have that that would have came up with that. Like I would have threw such a curse fit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sucks. Like you would have taken the risk for an advantage, and yeah, in the long run, it could build your game up. But it's just like it, it doesn't really do anything for you in that moment because it's so early on in the game. Yeah. It, it's it's so early, you can't really do anything with that. So the advantage is Sierra's uh, legacy advantage. Um, and he had to will it to a player from the other tribe, which he chose Morgan. Uh, we never got a clear explanation why Morgan. It's probably probably because that was the name he knew. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't blended yet, so... You know, how the reactions to of the other tribe when they were like sending him like I wouldn't have not have given it to Chris or Dominic or um, some of the other people that were like yeah let's send him he wants to be like that like you're not getting it so I think maybe he sent it to someone that was being nice in the situation too but yeah he, he gave it to Morgan yep and so he comes back to camp we're gonna fast forward here he comes back to camp um, and pretty much he in his words he tells the truth except for one little part yeah. <laughs> this one little part where he, he, he basically pulled the Bob Crowley and invented a created his own immunity idol and uh it was convincing looking and about twenty survivors ago it would have had like people fooled. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But Well it's not that it, you know, it was when he said he left the note. Right, and even the random like, like your survivor, survivor and how do you know? know? But, but you gotta, you gotta craft, craft up some, some other story, story like, like say, say um, I, I opened, opened the box, box and, and then there was like you know writing, writing in the box that said it was an email. Yeah. Like, like come, come up, up with, with another lie, lie on top of that. that. Like, like you can't just say you left the paper. Everyone knows if you have a piece of paper that's a souvenir, you're gonna keep it. Like you know, as a player, like thing you keep it. So 
that was just that was a mess up of a lie on his part. Yeah, see, you and I were thinking similarly. I was gonna say that the 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 writing was on the board that was part of the game, and you couldn't take the game with you. Yeah, exactly. So I would have said that, but I wouldn't even came. I wouldn't even like came up with that lie to begin with. I'd have left yeah. the mystery because then I would have been afraid of them wanting to flush the idol out. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So he put a, he paints a target on himself, and while uh, uh, all that was going on in Ghost Island, where he's coming, where he was making all this stuff up before he actually uh, told his lie, we we uh, we get a vote out. And that was uh, uh, Stephanie Gonzalez. This was so uneventful that I literally just skipped it. Didn't realize I skipped it. It was very uneventful. It wasn't an exciting tribal. Um, I mean, there was. There was just nothing there for me. Like I, when I think back at that tribal council, like I'm like, eh, that's a that's an okay vote out because I just I didn't really connect with her as a player. I get that she was probably you know strategic and strong. I'm not dissing her as a character at all, but it just for me, it was just like that's fair. Yeah, I I, I feel like oh, no. no, no, I feel like it, you know uh, it was a lost opportunity because she's. Puerto Rican and around the filming was a time of the whole Puerto Rican tragedy and I, I was hoping in the in my preview episode that maybe at somewhere along the season we would have got that emotional moment where Jeff would have told her hey this just happened in Puerto Rico we checked on your family and they're okay or, or something like that like but it's a missed yeah. opportunity she probably found all this out while she was at the Ponderosa um yeah devastating it's hard and I feel for her that's very very sad. Yeah, yeah, but uh, you know, in, in in the grand scheme of this episode, uh, just as we were saying before, we we came on the air. It's like it's pretty much the, was the Jacob show. So her elimination yeah. just went by the boards, and it had more to do about Jacob wasn't there, so she went. Yeah. So exactly. So moving on to the second half of the episode here, um, um, a couple of a couple of. A, a, a splinter alliances, I want to call them, because they're not really true alliances. We're no, starting no. The, the the form. Uh, Sebastian, who's my, who in my opinion is the Aussie clone of this season, uh, yeah. he teams up with Chris, um, and they kind of target. They kind of target Dominic. He's from my hometown, so I gotta, I gotta team up with him. It's like okay, it's not a reason to team up with someone, but it's fine. Normally, we get this from like LA survivors. Like they tend to, to do geographic alliances more than any other any other place. Um, there's a lot of on that tribe, in that TV tribe. There's a lot of New Yorkers and Floridians. So I yeah. guess it was just meant to be that someone was going to pick a geographic alliance, and it turned out to be the two Floridians. That's, yeah, that doesn't surprise me though. The two dudes, you know, and then they're you know automatically pinning against Dominic um, because of the very first day where Chris made that decision and Dominic wasn't, I don't think he agreed with it. And then he, you know, now they're going after him. So. Well, in the process huh? that made Dominic a little paranoid. And during the nighttime, he, in the, in the dark, he went searching for the hidden immunity idol. And to his credit, uh -oh. he searched hard enough to find it. It's, that is amazing. And, like, obviously, you know, any nook and cranny you can get your hands in. Um, you want to be diving in those holes to try to find him. And I was very excited that he found that because I know he was in a really tough spot. And um, I think it's, you know, him and Angela are the oldest people on this tribe. tribe so, and, and I know Wendell, Wendell does, does like, him, like him, but, but that's, that's only three, three people. people. And, and if, if they, they don't want, want to get rid of him, then he has to have, have that for backup. backup. So, so him, him having, having that, that, I'm, I'm hoping, hoping that, that he will he reverse, reverse and Andrea's curse with her idol, and he will play it when he needs to and not ever, ever, ever feel comfortable because you can never feel comfortable. I agree with you. My favorite part of that whole scene was, like, there was this critter that he tripped over. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Yeah, what? Uh, like a squirrel or something? No idea. That was pretty great. It, it literally just darted off into the woods, and I was just like, I didn't have that on my island. What was that? I don't know, but it was. It looked big. It's there's 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 a chance. It was big. There's a chance it was, that it wasn't a squirrel. Uh, yeah, how how would a squirrel get on the island? But <laughs> you know. 
And this is a chance. It was like an island rat because in my season they were pretty big. Yeah. Yeah, on my season, then, we joked and we like we could put saddles on the back of these. I have to go back and like I want to go back and slow motion the video and like watch what it is and see how exact like the exact size of it. Try to make out the creature. Yeah, because like I think he was sticking his hand in its home. <laughs> and they tell you not to do that. Don't stick hands in holes that aren't supposed to be dug in. And yeah. You do. You might just get bit by a critter of the night. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! So that was great. So we get to the, the to the challenge, and uh, the big thing about this challenge was the Donovan moment, where Donovan basically had like a Sari moment, where he had to overcome like uh, a personal fear and a personal struggle to uh, to help the tribe jump in the water and do something that an athlete couldn't do. And I really love that. And yeah, James is an athlete. You know, he's not a, a Olympic swimmer, but you know, he, um, I think he did like um, track. Yeah, he did track or something. So I, I can't blame him for not being able to swim because, you know, I can only hold my breath for so long. And it is very scary, you know, having to really hold your breath and go down there. So Jonathan, you know, persevering. And accomplishing that, this boy from Kentucky who's never left the States, it was a very beautiful moment. And I do think, you know, I will say this whenever Jacob's always talk, talking about, you know, how in the back in the first episode, he's like, our tribe is the best. I'm not saying they're the best tribe in Survivor history. I love their morale. Yeah. Their morale is great. They all, you know, Brendan is a teacher. He rallied up behind Donathan, and so did I. I saw Libby pat him on the back and uh, you're only a couple days into the game and I'm very competitive and I would have been you know pissed that we lost and I don't know if I would have you know I would have been very proud of him but I don't think I would be as celebratory to that loss like they were it was a very beautiful moment I thought and I I loved watching Donathan get in there and get it <laughs> they uh they lose a second one in a row yeah and uh our buddy Jacob is cornered because they did not send him to Exile Island, even though he was kind of smug and thinking that they, I said Exile Island, Ghost Island. Uh, he was yeah. kind of smug and believing that they would and smiling, and then they didn't. They sent Donovan. So, yeah, maybe. Uh... Yeah, that was unfortunate. And I don't, let's just play a game here. Let's say they sent him. To let's I almost said Exile Island. Let's say let's, let's say, say they, they sent, sent him, him to Ghost, Ghost Island, Island instead, instead of Donovan. Donovan. Do, you Do you think, think James, James would have went, went home instead, instead of Donovan? Donovan? I, I he was beating himself yeah. up. Yeah, James was really beating himself up, and you can't draw more attraction when you do something bad. Like, just, I mean, I've learned, not in just Survivor alone, but when you make a mistake, even in the real world, you want people to forget about it, you say you're sorry, and then you're going to do better the next time, and then you just go on. But he was dragging that guilt and losing the challenge, and it is daunting on you. Like, it sucks. Like, you're like, damn, I lost that challenge. But you can only do that for so long before people are like, yeah, you know, I guess he really did mess it up the more yeah. you put it into the mind. Because you, you don't know how it is out there. I mean, you can get put, put anything, anything in your mind. mind. So, the, so more the more you repeat, repeat yourself, yourself and your, and your broken, broken record, record, it's like, hmm, maybe James. James. So, so I, I do think in that, in that instance, if he would have went back, back to go to Ghost Island, Jacob, I think that James would have gotten sent home. Yeah, yeah. Perception is reality even more so on Survivor. And, uh, yeah, James basically was – was programming everybody into believing he was a screw up by repeating himself over and over again. Yeah. And uh but he got lucky that Jacob was around and then Stephanie uh was trying to was her mission was to make him feel secure so in the event that the oh, idol was wait, Oh yeah, Stephanie. I keep forgetting there's two there were two Stephanies. There's Gonzalez and Stephanie. Yeah, Stephanie Johnson. Yeah. Stephanie yeah. Johnson who uh who uh was an Iron Man comp competitor, so I felt like she was going to be like the really double she's a beat. woman in the, of the season, but she proved that she's multifaceted in that she was able to seduce Jacob into basically giving up all his information. And, you know, she, and she seduced him without being sexual. There are many ways to seduce. She just said all the things that he wanted to hear to seduce him. Into seduce him as a survivor fan. Yeah, exactly. 
talk nerdy to me. That's exactly what happened. And he just, he fell into it and felt very comfortable. But then we saw that she was starting to get torn because she realized, man, I have this guy's trust. And if you can see that you have someone's absolute trust in the game when he's already cornered and he's going to owe you his life, like, yeah, he's a Survivor fan and probably down the road he might flip. But in this moment, and it's so early on, I mean, she she could have went no, you know, either, either way. way. She, she went the way, the way she, she did. did. But, but either, either way, way, it, it, it would have been, been a good decision, decision for her. her. I, don't I don't think she, she could have went, went wrong either way. way. Uh, uh, Jacob's advantage in that she knows who got the uh, legacy advantage, and she could yep. she could totally use that, especially since uh, uh, this season is so twisty that I think she was already sensing there was going to be an, an early tribe tribe swap, which we find out later that that'll be the case. Um, which is so early. I get that they lost two in a row, but come on, I, that is I, let three people go and then do a tribe swap. You know. I, is my season? My season had a tribe spot after two eliminations, and so I kind of, I kind of feel like they were that they. This was all like they were planning to make this as twisty as possible. And if I would have been in that situation, I would have been sensing a tribe swap also. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't, but yeah. Oh well, but yeah, tribe swap's about to happen. So, uh, so I think that factored into her into her uh, decision making because I think if she felt like they were gonna, there was gonna be a long run with that particular group, she might have went the other way and kept Jacob. A hundred percent, yeah. And what I kind of saw in her was Sarah in that moment. So Sarah was like, I need that advantage. And I know Stephanie can't get her hands on that advantage right now. And I know that she, I mean, we all know that she knows that Morgan has this. So Jacob being gone, she, she can, can now, now manipulate, manipulate that, that situation, situation how she, she wants. wants. She can, she can buddy, buddy up, up with Morgan. Morgan. She, she can, can say, I told, I told Jacob. Jacob. She, can she can lie. She can, she can do whatever, whatever she wants, wants with the situation. situation. And, and it will be beautiful, beautiful if they both make it to, you know, the same tribe for a tribe swap, if they make it to the merge together. So much can happen from this where no matter what, Stephanie may, might get it. Um, or, you know, she might, it, it'll just play to her advantage with her alliance. So I think it's, I, I saw a little bit of Sarah in that moment with the way she voted out. Jacob now knowing that information and now getting her one step closer to it. Plus, there was no guarantee she was going to end up on the same tribe with Jacob, if that's what she was sensing. So, exactly. So, yeah, she, she did the right move. As much as I found Jacob entertaining, like, this position Sarah to where now she's the front runner. Yeah. Coming out of the situation. So, all right, so we've got, like, a ton of listener questions. Like I was, I'm impressed that for an episode one, so so many people like uh, sent in questions. So I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're gonna get to some of these right right now, and uh, the first one up is from Latifa, um, and she wants to know how did you apply for Survivor, and uh, and uh, were you nervous in the audition? And we're going to get a lot of these, what were your impression of? So she has a few of those. We'll get those from some of the other listeners. So how did you apply for the show? I sent in a video. I made a quick three-minute video. I let my personality kind of shine. I, you know, there's people that say that, like, there are people that get recruited, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I applied. I love the show. since little. And I finally had time and a camera to actually film myself and do it. Not saying I couldn't on my phone. I just wanted to do it, you know, as legit as possible. And... I sent it in, and, you know, it's a process. You don't hear back for a while, and I'm sure I don't know if you got heard back right away, but I didn't hear back right away. And I was like, all right, you know what? It's not going to happen, and it's okay. And then and I, got I got a call about, about a baby, baby. And, it's and it's a bunch, a bunch of, babies, of babies, you know, and, and nothing, nothing is certain, certain in this life, life and, and you just want to take advantage of every, every opportunity. So, so whenever, whenever I did, I did get, get to meet uh, people, people and go through, through the whole casting process, I was nervous. Because this is your one shot. It's like Eminem. Do not miss your chance to blow this opportunity. It comes once in a lifetime, you know? And I had to really just not let my nerves get the best of me. It's very nerve-wracking, um, and I'm very thankful that I got to live out a dream. But did the video, went through the process, and you just got to be yourself, you know? Nice. Nice. I, yeah. I always like people that actually get themselves on over the recruits. No offense to the recruits. Yeah, yeah, yeah 100%. 
A hundred percent. So our next question is from Olga, and she sends love all the way from Israel. So, uh, oh. yeah, nice. Um, uh, she says, uh, well done, Billy, for getting your own show. <laughs> I will miss nice. hearing Ben, but I have so much respect for you. Thank you, Olga. She wants to know if you and I have ever met the Sepia, the winner of uh, sur- the uh, fourth season of Survivor, I believe. I have not. I've met her a couple times. She is such a sweet person. She's deeply yeah. religious, uh, which is uh, kudos to her that she won Survivor being such a deeply religious person because that is, that is a, this is a game where you basically don't get to be like, uh, you know, uh, an honest an angel. Yeah, an angel, a saint. <laughs> but she's, she's, really, she's a really cool person. All yeah. right. So uh, we got another question here. This one is from Sasha, um, and she wants you to play a game of kiss, slap, hug, or run away. With <laughs> she's got a lot of names here, so we're only gonna name a few. We're only gonna name a few. Okay, hang on. You said I gotta write this down: kiss, slap, slap hug, or, or run, run away. away. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna start off with uh, a, a couple that she wrote from this season, uh, Donathan. Oh, so I'm just saying what I would do with him. Yeah. Oh, kiss him. He's the best. Uh, all right. Uh, Lucy from your season. Hug. I love her. Uh, I give her a kiss. Too. I love Lucy. Okay. Okay. Um, here's a couple of legends here. Sue Hawk. Hug. All right. All right. The queen herself, Sandra. Kiss and hug. <laughs> All right. And we'll do one last one. Richard Hatch. Run away. <laughs> All, right. All right. You know, I'm glad you didn't say slap because you're a boxer. Your slaps are hurt more than most people's punches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And speaking of Lucy, we got a lot of these. Um, uh, Lucas, we'll, we'll go with Lucas's version here of, of what – she wants to know, what was it like to be in the presence of the tiger mom queen herself, Lucy, on your pre-jury trip? I loved her. I loved her. Lucy and I actually are, we aren't, we, I haven't talked to her in a little bit, but she was like my best friend on that trip. And I don't know if it's because we both are very bold personalities. We both wanted to relax and kind of ease, but like she kind of also played into not really a mother role for me on the trip, but like a mom slash best friend she was for me out there um, on my pre-jury trip and you know I had to deal with you know Michaela as well um, you know I'm, I'm cool with her in real life but we had just got out of the game where we weren't cool so it was very hard for me to be on a trip with Michaela and then you know someone I voted out like Mari who like was probably upset with me and not happy with me yeah. and um, then, then like, like Rachel, Rachel was the first out she was, she was like a bold personality, personality. Love, love her, her. Just, like, like, super, super like Loud, loud and energetic. And energetic. And and I wasn't, I wasn't ready, ready for that. that. I just, I just got, got voted out. out. So, so and then, then Paul. Paul. So like, it's, it's just a lot, lot that, that you're not, not ready for, right? And it's 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 a little bit like the real world. You just get sent off on vacation with seven strangers, and uh, you're picked to live in a house together. And Lucy was the coolest roommate I could have asked for. Um, and I love her very much for that. Sweet, sweet. All right. So from Ruth Marie. Uh, this one's going to be, uh, a, a, a kind of like a pick game that she wants, she, she wants to play with you. Uh, okay. if you were on the, uh, Ex- Exile Island reward boat, I guess this is the Cochran twist. She's probably, she's probably anticipating, Ruth Marie's probably anticipating this is going to come up somewhere in the season. Yeah. So which one of these, which one of these advantages would you pick? Would you pick the vote tripler where your vote counts three times? Would you pick the spy bunker where you get 30 minutes access to a, uh, uh, an underground shelter beneath the, the, beneath the tribe shelter? Uh, the vote reveal where you find out after, after tribal council who voted what? Or the mutiny idol where the person voted out, you play it, and instead of going out of the game, they go to the other tribe. Three votes. That's the one I would have picked as well. 100%. I'm not saying that the other ones aren't good. But three votes, that's a lot. And I would take that in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah, I think the spy bunker is my least favorite because, A, they would have to be at the shelter. 
for, for that to even be worth it, and, and B, like, they'll notice you're gone. <laughs> and anyways, even if I built a spy shelter somewhere, a spy shack somewhere and I hid, I don't really think I care to eavesdrop that much. Um, if I have three votes, I feel pretty solid. So. Yeah, yeah, you could probably vote someone out by yourself, basically, depending yeah. on where you are in the game. Yeah. All right, so Gene... Uh, says, firstly, congratulations on the podcast upgrade, Billy. <laughs> I upgraded. <laughs> All right, thank you. And um, and uh, he hopes that you and I return in a future season. Heck yeah. yeah. Me, you and I both, Billy, and you, sir, whoever wrote that. <laughs> Us, we, all, we all want that. <laughs> so so uh, we've got Greg, Greg here, and Craig, I'm sorry, Craig, I totally botched your name. Um, <laughs> and uh, he wants to know if we think the season would have been better with returning players, like this season's twist, with the players that made the mistakes. No. All right. I, I think that's, that's a cool idea, but I think since we – well, we just saw a returning season, not, you know, for game changers, and that would be requiring a lot of them to come back. Mm-hmm. And – Right away that they deserve that. Maybe if Ghost Island would have been Game Changers and said, I could have seen that be different. And then, like, you know, if someone like Sarah were to get Andrea's idol, you know, I I just think it's cool to watch pl- new players get, like, super fans get to reverse these curses. I think that's what's important with the season Ghost Island. Yeah, it could have had some potential with returning players um, and their mistakes. But I think that's what second chance is for, for them to, you know, prove themselves worthy of having that second chance, not just reversing their own curse. So I like the newbies on it. Uh, I agree. I agree. I agree. All right, we got a, uh, about three more, three or four more. Uh, we got Mitch. Uh, wants to know who's the biggest uh, diva on your tribe. <laughs> on my tribe? Yeah. The biggest diva? On my tribe, the biggest diva. People would probably say me. I would say I would say Michaela. Okay. Okay, I could totally see that. It would either be me or Michaela, because honestly, her and I are very, I feel like we both have very similar outgoing personalities in real life, and in real life, if we would have met before Survivor, it would have been something like her and I would be friends. Like, that would be the type of personality I could hang out with, and we just keep it real. But out there, we both are just, like, the definition of extra. Like, we are just over-the-top extreme, arguing, like, blah, blah, blah. So I think my tribe would say I'm the diva, but it would, for me, Michaela. Well, I never played Survivor with you, but I think you're easy to get along with. Thank you, yeah. And it's just, but think, you know, Millennials versus Gen X. Millennials, like, when I was arguing and then I had the showman, it's like, they probably viewed me as, like, someone that's, like, oh, the queen of, you know, Millennials, man. <laughs> All right, so we got this one uh, from Isaac, and he wants to know uh, uh, what would be the twist we would want, like if we were sent to Ghost Island. Like, what would be the one that we would hope to get? Which pass? I, I would hope for an idol. You always want idols, you know. Yeah. So if I can, if I could get both of James' idols, I would take both of his idols. That's what I would want. To yeah, even though they were humongous and impossible to hide and conceal. It's still an idol. It's still two. It's better. It's two idols. So yeah, yeah that's a good exactly. One. If I play them both back to back. If I was in trouble. Yeah, for sure. You know what? I would want his idols in a situation where it's like a double tribal, where we have to basically vote out two people. Yeah. I would. I would play them in the same tribal. Back to back. Back to back. All right. So Rachel wants to play a game with you as well. Kiss, marry, or have a lunch date with. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Chris. So the first pick is Chris from this season. Lunch date. Okay. Okay. Sue Hawk is pretty popular. I don't know why <laughs> they want to mention Lou Sue Hawk, but all right. Lunch date. Yeah, I don't blame you. I don't blame you. All right. <laughs> and uh, the uh, the host of uh, or, or, of of, of the, the Oz Network, Ben Watersworth. Lunch date. <laughs> all right. I'll save you the rest of these days. I think they're all going to be lunch dates. All right. Last couple here. We got Paul. And he says Jenna gives him the Office of Sarah vibe. 
which I think you and I both agree was more. It was uh, it was it was more Stephanie Johnson, but yeah, when, when, I don't think I don't get the Jenna. I don't get a Sarah vibe from Jenna. I mean, I see that she's like, I'll do whatever they say, like whatever Stephanie says. I I get a, I could get some of that personality, you know, a little bit. I don't. I, th- I see it more in Stephanie, like you said. Yeah, yeah. In fact, there wasn't a whole lot of Jenna to go by in this. In this. No, universe. there's a there's a lot of people that didn't get a light shined on them yet. So yeah, I agree. I agree. So the last one is Granny Survivor, who's like the staple of, of these uh, Survivor recaps. She uh, congratulates congratulations to the legendary Billy Garcia. I had to throw that in there. She said that. Nice. <laughs> and so uh, uh, a lot of these questions that she asked pretty much uh, already been asked. So I'll go. I'll drop down to her fourth one. Um, have you ever been to Australia? Yeah, for my pre-jury trip. Thanks for asking. <laughs> Same here. I went on my pre-jury trip as well to, to Queensland and specifically to Noosa Heads. Oh, that's cool. We went to Brisbane and Cairns, and it was okay. okay like so Brisbane is still in Queensland. Yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. We, I, we, we landed suck, in yeah. oh, Okay. <laughs> All right. So she always gives us this true or false game here. So we're going right. to play this true or false here. It's Survivor Trivia. If I get them wrong, it is what it is. I'm a fan, but there's some seasons that I've missed, so let's do it. All right. So this season is the first ever to have someone named Laurel. True or false? False. Oh, it was, it's true. It was true. There were a lot it's, of Lauras and Laurens. Like, honestly, I've never heard of a Laurel, but I was like, Maybe I'm wrong. All right, so here's, here's another one. Uh, in, in the past season, we've had a person named Prue. False. All right, you're one and one. You, you, you're back out of here. You're, you're back in. All right. I'm like, what? All right, so uh, Panama and Cook Islands are tied for the season with the most tribes before. True. All right, you're you got a winning record. You're two and one. Yeah. I, yeah. I tried to put on a poker face because I knew that one because I was in a Cook Island. Yeah. No, I was say I was like, okay, your season and them. Yeah. So, uh, uh, here we go. Uh, if you get this one, you win. Uh, if not, we have to go to a tiebreaker. Uh, oh, no. Jerry still holds the record for the most votes cast against her in a season. That's Jerry Mann. Yeah. Um. True. No. It was false. It's actually Laura Moretti with uh, and Blood vs. Water. She had a total um, of 19 cast against her. Jeez. All right. For players who played in multiple seasons in over 100 games, uh, 100 days. I'm sorry. Uh, Sari holds the record for the least amount of votes cast against her across those seasons. True. And you take it. True. She only had nine, including the last one. She had zero, and she still went out. Do I win a million dollars? <laughs> you will a million hugs. How's that? <laughs> well, thank you so much for, for joining us, Biggie. Thank you. This was so oh, much fun. This is so fun. Yeah, you definitely have to have me back on this season because I love Ghost Island, and I think I'm going to have a lot to say about it. All right. Will do. We definitely bring you back. All righty, Billy. Thank you so much. Billy has spoken. Biggie has <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Oz Network. Don't forget to subscribe to get new episodes delivered to your speakers every week. For more information, hit us up at theoznetwork.net.